Hi, my name is Chris Greenway. I'm a senior product manager working on Calman, and today we're going to walk through a Sony calibration. In Calman, go ahead and open up the Sony AutoCal workflow. Once that's open, we're going to get set up. I've already set up a couple of elements. I've got my C6 meter positioned on the center of the screen already. I've got my portrait displays G1 generator already warming up the TV so it's nice and warmed up for the calibration. On the calibration workflow, the first thing we're going to ask is you to, to tell us which type of TV you're calibrating. I'm going to be calibrating an OLED today. Go ahead and press next. We're going to connect up to our hardware. Calman is already connected to my, um, to my C6. You can tell that because the meter tab is highlighted in green. You can see that right here. I also have the OLED TV WRGB option selected already. This is a quantum dot OLED, so let me select the right display type. There we go. And next we're going to connect to the G1. Press find source, and you can select G1 from this option. Make sure to select portrait displays and G1. Now this one, it will try and find it on the network. Mine has already been found. I'm going to go ahead and connect. All right, once we're connected, you can see that we do show an alignment pattern. The alignment pattern has a narrow border around the edge. You can see that all on there, so that means it is set up correctly. Our circles are round, and we have our meter on the center of the screen. Because this is an OLED TV, I'm going to use 10% windows. And just to begin, I'm going to do a pre-calibration measurement. While those measurements are happening, let me talk a little bit about the charts and graphs that you see on the screen. We've got an RGB balance chart that tells us what the balance is between red, green, and blue, and how close we're going to match our desired white point. In this case, we're targeting D65. We've got a delta E chart which gives us an estimation of how close or how far off we are from our target. Ideally, what we'd like to see is delta E's under 1. For our color checker chart over here on the left, the large wedge shape is the CIE, and that represents human vision, the color, all the colors we could possibly potentially see. The triangle that's highlighted here is our 709 color space, so that's the target that we're using for our SDR calibration. The squares that are within that triangle are the specific color patches that we're measuring. The dots that are starting to populate now are the measurements of those targets. So you can see that those dots currently are not lining up all that well on those targets. And you can also see on the red, green, and blue balance or RGB balance chart that the blue is pretty high, our red and green are a bit lower. The other thing to notice on this RGB balance chart is that all of those, these levels are elevated a little bit, which means that our luminance isn't quite tracking the same as what we'd like it to be. Okay, as those pre-calibration measurements complete, a couple of other things to note real quick is that we do show average and maximum uh, delta E values for each of those uh, run types between our color checker and our grayscale. Uh, the, on the color checker, you can see that we do have some points that are, are outside of the range of our targets. So we'll go through the calibration and get those dialed in. The next step is to connect to the Sony TV. If you haven't already, go to the Play Store on your TV and download the Calman for Bravia app. To connect to Calman, first thing you'll need to do is open up the Calman for Bravia app. Go ahead and agree. On the top right corner of the screen here, it's going to show the IP address for the TV. Enter the IP address as it's shown on the top right of the screen and press connect. You'll see that almost immediately it'll show connected right here. It'll still take a couple moments as Calman uh, syncs all the settings. Once it is connected fully in Calman, we'll see our indicator light here on our display tab, noted as green. We can select either custom for Pro 1 or 2. We're going to hit full DDC reset to make sure that we're in a good point for starting our calibration. You can see that when I hit full DDC reset, our display tab pulses briefly while we do the reset. Once that's complete, we can go ahead and click next. Now, our first step is going to be to measure our luminance and check what that is. I'm at about 128 nits right now. I think this is going to be used in a fairly dim room when I'm done with it. So I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. I'm going to actually target hitting a, right around 100 nits. Now, over here in our instructions, we do note that you'll probably want to leave this just a little bit elevated from your target. That's because as we calibrate the grayscale, we will lose a little bit of luminance as we get the red, green, and blue balance dialed in. A little bit about this control that I'm using right now. You can use the plus or minus to increment up and down. You can also grab the edge of the slider and just control it that way. 
or you can type in a number manually. Okay, I'm at about 109 nits right now. I, as I said, I'm gonna, cal I'm gonna aim for a calibration of 100 nits when I'm done. So we're gonna stop it right there and we'll do final verification on the luminance at the end. Notice that I did get an error message saying that the grayscale was not able to complete successfully because I canceled out. I'm gonna open a DDC window here. This is the controls that Calman's gonna be adjusting. And I'm gonna just try and not have that cover too much on the screen so you can see what the controls are being adjusted. All right, so I have my DDC controls over here as well so you can see those adjusted in real time. I'm gonna select the 20 point option for my grayscale points and Calman does have a Delta E target the default delta E target for Calman is 0.5. I'm gonna set that to 0.5 manually because my preferences have been changed, so I was, had it set to 0.1 earlier. Go ahead and click OK, and it's gonna start the AutoCal. What we're gonna do is we are gonna start at 100%, and we're gonna make some adjustments to the controls. We're gonna make those adjustments kind of across the board, trying to get as many as the controls all the way through the display as close to accurate as possible. So you can see that what we've done here is we measured at 100%, and we started to pull blue out from all of the points on that display. As we go down and then measure at 50% and then at 25%, next we'll measure at 75%, and that's giving us a couple of different points to check along the way so we can pre-adjust pre the controls across the board. Once we're done with those, what we're gonna do is we're still gonna go through and measure and calibrate and adjust every, every step along the way, making sure that all the controls are at their best values. What doing that preset allows us to do though is it allows us to speed up a lot on the calibration itself. You'll notice that we aren't having to make almost any adjustments at all at this point because the preset calibration um, was able to get us very close. All right, and it looks like our grayscale is getting pretty close to complete here. You'll notice a couple things on here. So at this point, we're not making very, very small changes to the last points, but essentially all the points in between, we were able to make those change, make only fine-tuning adjustments after doing those first couple of first couple of adjustments for the majority of that the corrections. On this chart here for the luminance, you'll see that our gray measured line is lining up very, very nicely right over the yellow target line. You'll notice that on our RGB balance charts here, that the red, green, and blue lines are all lined up right on top of each other, right along 100, which is exactly where we want them to be. Our delta E2000, again, our delta E is just kind of a measure of how close or far off we are from our targets. You'll notice that our delta E charts look almost empty. There are a couple of values in here. They're just very hard to see, They're very small. Um, so we are well within our delta E targets of trying to make sure we get less than one. Looks like we are just finishing our last point here. It does take a little bit longer to read these darker points as we do try and collect just a little bit more light. And it looks like our calibration has completed. Go ahead and click OK. We're going to move on to the next step. Our next step is we're going to calibrate our color space controls. Again, I'll open up the controls that on the side so you can see those. And we're going to hit our AutoCal button to start that calibration. So I just skipped over the setting of what those settings were because I wanted to talk more about why those settings are set as they are. So you'll notice that on the screen here, we're showing our color space targets here, the highlighted triangle within our CIA chart. You'll also notice that the points that we're measuring aren't at the edges of this triangle, but are instead are inside a little bit. And that's deliberate. What we're doing is we're calibrating this to about 75 to 75% saturation, as opposed to out to 100%. Now on, on a nice premium TV like this, it probably won't ultimately have much of an effect on the final calibration, but it's really a good practice to do anyway, just to make sure that what we're doing is we're trying to calibrate for our overall picture and our overall picture is gonna include a lot of stuff in the interiors where our eyes are gonna be more sensitive. So if you look at our red control that we've already adjusted, that control is gonna kinda of calibrate this whole area and it's gonna interact with the yellow, it's gonna interact with the magenta as well. But when we're doing that calibration, what we wanna do is we wanna optimize for any of the content that might be in that area. And as you look at the red and the yellow, what we see is a lot of things that are going to be in that area that are, our eyes are gonna be pretty sensitive to, like skin tones. So we wanna make sure that what we're doing is we're calibrating for those interior points as well. Now, that doesn't mean you can't calibrate to the uh, out to 100% saturation if you'd like. Right over here in the main menu, or in the settings menu, right here, we say which level of saturation sweeps we're calibrating, we're measuring. 
and right now it's set to 75% only. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set that to 25% sweeps, and you can see that I've just added a lot more points onto this chart. Instead of calibrating for all of that, what I'm going to do, and again, because we only have one point for this red region, for example, or one point for the green region, so we have to opt we have to optimize where we think we're going to get the best calibration overall. But I can still do a validation run afterwards if I'd like, and I can see and make sure that that calibration is going to look good across the board, even after I did it at one point. And what we might find uh, is that maybe uh, if we calibrate it at one point, we might find that maybe that point is kind of an outlier and we want to calibrate at a different point. Again, I don't think that's going to be an issue at all with this particular TV, but it's a good practice to follow anyway. So as I'm doing those measurements, you see that we calibrated here at 75%, but at 25%, uh, 50%, and at 100%, our calibration is still very nice. We're going to let that finish measuring through, and then we're going to go on to the next step. Okay. Now looking at our brightness pattern, brightness pattern can be a little hard to see in a studio environment, just we've got a lot of ambient light in for sure, um, and I'm calibrating this for a fairly dim environment. But we do want to look for a couple of things on our brightness pattern. Uh, it's our level 16 here is our video black. Our levels below that should all blend into the background. Coming out from video black, 17, 18, 19, 20, up to 23 are visible. And we want to make sure that we do see content in those. That's, that's our coming out of black controls. Our contrast pattern here, video white is 235 here. And it's a little bit dissimilar from the brightness pattern in that while this is above our legal range, it goes into what we sometimes refer to as super white. Seeing those values up there is, is perfectly fine. Seeing content above those is perfectly fine as well. We 255 is the top of our range in 8-bit. And you do notice that we can see content up to about 249 or so, and then it clips out. We don't see any more content past there. The other thing we want to be really careful when we're looking for it in a contrast pattern in general is we're looking for if there's some degree of color shift, which might indicate that one channel, red, green, or blue, is not keeping up with the rest. It clips out a little bit earlier. I'm going to do a quick measurement for that clipping behavior. What this measurement does is that we're going to measure just below 100%, uh, at 100%, and then we're going to measure points up above 100% so we can see where, at what point the display clips. And you can see on this one, I do have just a little bit of clip here at the very top, which, is, which matches up with what we saw in our contrast pattern. Just for the sake of demonstration, I am going to try and adjust this contrast all the way up and just see if we do get more clip. So you notice that when that contrast control is adjusted up, this measured line here flattens out a little bit lower. If I bring up the contrast pattern again, you'll notice also that on this pattern, there's now, now none of that content, um, even below 100% white, is as actually visible. I'm going to go ahead and adjust my control back down. And you can see that that content's visible again. All right. At this point, our calibration is actually done. What we're going to do is we're going to do post-calibration verification. We're going to measure the same points that we did for our pre-calibration. Um, and we're going to look at the same charts on there so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison pre and post. The things that we're looking for here are our RGB balance chart. Again, we're looking for the red, green, and blue to be completely balanced on top of one another there, and they should track right along this 100% line. Our DE2000 chart here, we're looking for if there are any values that are high. It does look like I have one outlier here, so I'm going to go ahead and go back into the calibration and check that really quick. Our color checker, that'll tell us how well we did on the calibration for the colors. And again, what we're looking for here is DE under 1 if possible. Okay, so it looks like the that color checker is finished reading. I'm going to first just try rereading that point and see if I possibly got a misread. All right, it does look like something something is not quite right there. So I'm going to go in and just confirm that on our grayscale page here. Actually, I'm going to do a read series here. Get all fresh data on there. Okay, so when I do that reread, you do see that I've got that spike here that I was measuring before on the post calibration. It does look a little bit weird. What's also interesting is my measure, my control value at that point is a little bit high. 
um, or right around there is a little bit high, which seems to indicate that something's probably a little bit amiss. Now, there's a couple of potential ways that that could happen. We can go through and just rerun the autocal if we'd like. Um, that's one way to correct it, or we can just manually adjust the point. I'm just going to demonstrate doing that real fast. So I'm measuring here at 60%, and we've got this control at 54 that's a little bit high. I'm going to adjust that one first and just see if that's um, bringing us more in line. Now that does seem to be pretty effectively adjusting that point that was out, was misaligned. What we're going to do now is we are going to measure the points around it because all of these calibration points will interact a little bit with one another. So it's important to make sure that when we do something like that, that we're not uh, introducing additional error someplace else. All right, so measuring the point below, and it does look like it doesn't look like that was really affected at all. Also, looks like I might be able to tweak it just a tiny bit to get that even more lined up. Okay, and I'm going to check the point above as well. Okay, that's enough that I'm convinced that that's probably good. That said, we're going to skip back forward to our post calibration verification page and just re verify. Just for the sake of being able to compare these, I'm going to open a new history tab here that allows us to toggle between two sets of readings or multiple sets of readings and see any differences. Now, again, part of how we do our calibrations with Calman is we do do a calibration. Once our calibration is fully complete, we do this post calibration and we do it as a full sweep. And part of the reason is so that we can identify if any controls have maybe interacted with one another in a negative way or caused any issues. So it's really valuable being able to just see, okay, now that we, our calibration is all done, we're no longer calibrating. We're going to do a full sweep of the TV, make sure everything is, is completely accurate. Looks like we did get that issue at 60% corrected. Um, that's looking much better. We'll do the color checker sweep again, just make sure, but we don't, I don't anticipate we'll see any additional errors there. Okay, and our full sweep is completed now. Uh, we do notice that all of, our, all of our DE values for grayscale and color checker are under one, exactly where we want them to be. I'm gonna go ahead and close this control panel and skip next to our pre-post calibration. Our pre-post calibration does pull from history tab one, so if we have different data on history tab one versus two, um, we will get um, that won't show up quite correctly. So I'm going to reread those just so we, that looks correct on our pre and post calibration page. On our pre and post calibration page, what we are going to see is this was a fresh TV out of the box. I don't know what was in what picture mode it was in when I started, but the the initial picture quality was we the initial state of the TV was that we did have blue high, we had red green a little bit low. We weren't quite tracking along with our luminance and our color checker had oversaturated colors that were also shifted a little bit to the blue. Uh, after calibration, all of that was brought very, very well into in alignment. All right, so that calibration is now done. Uh, one of the exciting things about what Sony does is they take that calibration that's done on the SDR and they've spent a lot of time researching how to do this well for their specific TVs. They uh, scale that so it's applied for the HDR as well. I hope you found that helpful. Thank you very much.